Starlow Gets Real is my YouTube channel devoted to all things fishing related. It features tests, reviews and product information along with great fishing tips and advice. Why not subscribe so that you don't miss a thing? Offshore bottom fishing is a fun way to catch a feed and if conditions are right you don't need a big boat or a huge motor to get amongst it. What you do need is a depth sounder and the right safety gear for your waters. We like to drift. You can use overhead or spin reels, but braided lines are bonus. It's skinnier than mono and has less stretch. That means you can use lighter sinkers and feel more. It's also easy to tell when your rig hits the bottom. The action often comes fast, but you may have to sort through a bit of bycatch to find better quality fish. Paternoster rigs are the go, with the sinker at the bottom and hooks on short droppers. There are a few ways you can build these rigs. I'm using three-way swivels, but you could tie dropper knots. We favour octopus or suicide hooks and the lightest possible sinker. Today that's about 100 grams or 4 ounces. This is a better fish. Let the rod soak up the lunges and keep everything smooth. Yep, it's a rubber lip moe and a good one. Believe it or not, these are actually our targets today. We reckon they're highly underrated fish. Joe's on too and it's a beauty. While she battles hers, I'll show you how I bait up. I'm using prawns. Pull the head off and drop it over as burly, then slide the prawn on tail first. The hook's almost concealed, but the point's exposed, and the red bead doesn't hurt either. Here comes Joe's fish. It's another cracking rubber lip moe, and it's even bigger than mine. It's giving her a bit of stick too. At around 1.8 kilos, or 4 pounds on the old scale, it's a ripper. With pigfish, nanagai, gurnard perch and more moeys, we're racking up a pretty good feed and the odd plate sized snapper is always a welcome addition to the bag. We're keeping them fresh in a slurry of ice and seawater. Cleaning fish is never as much fun as catching them, but having really sharp knives certainly makes a big difference. I use my Nari KE3000 Professional Knife Sharpener to keep my blades wickedly sharp. It's a great bit of kit. We prefer to fillet, skin and debone nearly everything we catch. In our opinion, this process dramatically improves the quality and flavour of the end product. After removing the fillet, I carefully cut away the entire rib cage area and that black stomach lining. I also feel with my finger for the line of bones running along the middle of the fillet and slice around these. No one likes a mouthful of bones when eating fish. These mowong also have a patch of dark, strongly flavoured flesh on their shoulders and I cut this away too. It's certainly not wasted though as our dog loves this bit. Next I skin the fillet. To do this, carefully separate the meat from the skin at the tail end, hold the skin down firmly and continue to slice forward as shown. Pull the meat away from the skin. The areas of bone that you trimmed earlier should stay attached to the skin, but feel carefully to make sure you haven't missed any bones, and if you have, trim them out. Spending a few more seconds getting it right at this stage can add immeasurably to the enjoyment of your meal. A final check for any stray bones and your fillet's done. Lots of people complain about an iodine taint in Moong, but trust me, when processed like this, they're absolutely delicious. There are any number of ways you can cook the end product. Follow this link to see how Joe steamed ours Asian style with ginger and oyster sauce. Yummo! If you enjoyed this clip and would like to see more like it, please take a moment to subscribe to my Starlow Gets Real channel on YouTube. Until next time, tight lines.